Hello and welcome to Star Trek is Life. In this video we're going to take a look at the history of Unimatrix Zero. This will be part 3 of a 3 part series. If you haven't watched part 1 and 2 yet, then what are you waiting for? So in part 1 we discussed what Unimatrix Zero was, how drones entered it, and which drones were capable of entering. In part 2 we covered what the Borg Queen knew about Unimatrix Zero, the creation of the nanovirus, and how Captain Janeway helped to deploy this nanovirus in spite of the Borg Queen's warnings. In part three, we're going to cover the fall of the Unimatrix Zero and the post-resistance to the Borg. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. After the nanovirus was released, the Borg Queen began to lose contact with drones possessing the genetic mutation. In an attempt to force Captain Janeway to give her an antidote to the virus, the Queen interrogated her and destroyed entire Borg vessels in which she could no longer hear only two or three drones. Despite this, Janeway still refused. The Borg managed to reprogram the nanovirus to shut down the autonomic functions of the drones with the genetic mutation, making them die within minutes. The Queen herself would release it from within Unimatrix Zero. When Janeway was told by the Queen that she had to make a decision, make the drones return to the Collective or they would all be killed, she conferred with her first officer, Commander Chakotay, via Voyager's holographic system and told him Unimatrix Zero could no longer exist. To save the drones with the genetic mutation, it was necessary to destroy Unimatrix Zero. This was done by the Voyager and Borg Sphere under the command of the Klingon Korok, an occupant of Unimatrix Zero. Both starships had reconfigured their deflector emitters to disrupt the interlake frequency and so destroyed the Unimatrix Zero. Although this resulted in the destruction of Unimatrix Zero, it also resulted in the creation of a fleet of multiple Borg vessels under the control of former drones. These drones going on to make up the resistance movement against the Borg. Unimatrix Zero was gone, but the drones themselves had survived. It is unknown if any of these drones did succeed, although Korok promised to stay in touch with the Voyager. And that, my Star Trek of Friends, is part three of our three-part series discussing the history of Unimatrix Zero. If you appreciate the information presented in this video, and who wouldn't, then you'll want to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Anything less would be illogical. Remember, Star Trek is life.